We're now in Matthew chapter 15 and in verse 1. Then there came to Yeshua scribes and Pharisees from Jerusalem, saying, Why do you taught ones transgress the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. Now before we go any further, I know this is going to sound like I spoke Martian or some other weird language. But let's understand the context of what follows is based on an understanding that the scribes and Pharisees have an issue with the disciples eating bread, bread, not pork, not meat, not shellfish, not catfish. They're eating bread. And they're eating it with what? Unwashed hands. Okay, and by the way, it's not like their hands were dirty, that kind of unwashing. They did not do a ritual because it says the tradition of the elders. It was not a tradition of the elders to wash their hands. Lots of people wash their hands. The tradition of the elders was to do a ritual called nitilat yadayim which was a ritual of washing the hands where you had a water a pitcher and a bowl and you put your hand over the, and you poured the water over the left and then over the right. You did this two or three times depending on the tradition. Okay, once on the left and once on the right and once on the left and once on the right. Okay, that's sort of the most common way to do it. Okay, twice on each hand, but you do the left, then the right, then the left, then the right. Now, so apparently they saw the disciples eating bread and they hadn't done the ritual before eating. So let's understand that's the issue here. But he answering and said to them, Why do you also transgress the command of Elohim because of your tradition? For Elohim has commanded saying, So now he's reversed. He said, Your disciples are breaking the tradition of the elders. And he's like, Well, you think that's bad? You guys are breaking the traditions of Elohim. I think that's a little bit more of a concern. Where it says, Respect your father and your mother. And he also says, He who curses his father and mother, let him be put to death. But you say, whoever says to his father and mother, whatever profit you might have received from me has been, de has been dedicated, or Corbin, in other words, given to the temple, is certainly released from respecting his father and mother. So they had a tradition that said, hey, remember, the child would get the inheritance, and often the inheritance would be given to the child before the parent died so that the child could take care of the parent and take care of the situation, because the parent may have become too weak to maintain their authority. Because weakness was dangerous. If you were weak, someone might come in and steal and take from you or whatever, take advantage of your weakness. So often, the eldest, the firstborn, was given the inheritance prior to the parent passing. And the child would then be responsible to then use that inheritance and that wealth to care for their parents as well as to provide for the entire uh, tribe or clan or whatever their fam the whole family was dependent on the inheritance given to the firstborn. But yet... Their tradition was that a firstborn could then offer that which he would normally use to take care of his parents as an offering to the temple, and this would take away his responsibility to then care for his parents. And so this is what the Corbin thing was all about, where they said, well, we don't have to take care of our parents because we gave it, we offered it to the temple. And by the way, dedicated to the temple doesn't mean they actually gave it, but they said, look, this is money that we are giving. It's the temple's money. We'll give it over time. We're just not going to use it to take care of our parents. See, that's what's going on here. The arrogance, the hubris, the, the lack of humility here of people to say, oh, we know better, because that's what's going on here when they said, oh, we don't have to honor mother and father, which is the, you know, the fourth, I mean, the, excuse me, the fifth commandment. We don't have to honor mother and father with the fifth commandment. Because after all, we offered and dedicated what we had to the temple. He's saying, who, who gave you the right to change laws and to make decisions like that? You can't see nothing wrong with tradition. We're going to find it out in, in, in more, more studies on this. There's nothing wrong with tradition as long as it doesn't do any, either of two things. One, as long as you don't treat it like it's Torah. And two, as long as it's not an excuse to break Torah. Here they were using their tradition as an excuse to, excuse to break Torah. And in the beginning, the idea of washing with you know, eating bread with unwashed hands, that was trying to elevate a tradition to Torah. So the two problems are being discussed right here. He's saying, first of all, the tradition is not Torah, so stop giving my students grief about it. He never said it was a wrong tradition, by the way. He never said there was anything wrong with washing the hands before you eat with this ritual. He simply said, mm, so what? <laughs> okay, so they didn't do it, big deal. He says, I'd be more concerned with the fact that you are breaking Torah by a tradition. But look what he says here, in case we weren't sure. He says, verse 20, these defile the man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile the man. So is he talking about the food or is he talking about the tradition? 
He's talking about the tradition. He's saying, don't worry about the tradition being defiling you, that you didn't do the defiling because yeah, this has nothing to do with what they're eating. It had to do with how they were eating. They were eating bread. Now, Luke chapter, um, what is it, Luke 7? Is that where, the, where we normally, uh, no, excuse me, Mark 7, right? Is it Mark 7 where we have that whole big thing where people want to go into Mark? Okay. So I just want to make sure that, um, right. So when people want to use Mark chapter 7 to undermine uh, Kashrut, that you can eat whatever you want because in Mark chapter 7 and in your um, nearly inspired or non-inspired version, the NIV, they inserted the words, thus Jesus made all foods clean. Okay, that's nowhere in any scripture. That's nowhere in the Greek, but it was inserted by the good friends of ours at, at Zondervan. Thank you very much. Okay, when they made the NIV, that's what they'll use. But in Matthew, he makes it more clear. He says, look, it's not defiling you when you eat with unwashed hands. It's, what, it's the attitude in the heart. It's not having the spirit and the truth. 